Morning tubers, welcome back for another adventure. I have some work to do in this garage and quite honestly it is just a train wreck. Right, it is impossible to use. Everywhere you look <laughs> there's junk and there's stuff in the way and I think I have the fix for this. So let me get started and you'll see what it looks like when it's all done. I added this bump out between the garage doors, it sticks out about 20 inches, and if I can turn that into some crazy good storage, I think I can solve some of my problems. So imagine that bump out with file cabinets in it and my uh, hot air heater, my diesel fired hot air heater, how much space I can save. and how I can have many things I use all the time right where I can put my hands on them and I'm not always searching. Also in that pod will be my um, solar charged battery, my radios, and kind of the power for the shop. So in a very small area, centrally located, I have a lot of things I need and it's not taking up shop space. So I emptied out that area and I'm ready to pop one of the file cabinets in there. But one could see it's kind of like having a closet. I uh, moved the battery and the radio up. You can see the compressor up on top there. It goes into the spool. Um, once again, a very dense area for storage and tools and so forth. The concept of using filing cabinets for tools not old, um, but the nice thing about file cabinets, particularly the vintage models, is normally they're very, very strong. Um, like, one could stand on these and they would take the weight. The more modern looking ones, um, not so much. Basically, if you have trouble lifting a file cabinet, that makes it a good one. It's also good if it's got a brass tag on it. Right, that's who made these, I guess. Anyway, so let me get everything put together and uh, we'll see what it all looks like. What you're looking at is that area partially filled. I wanted to show you before I filled it up completely what it looks like. So I'm put a frame around here, the upper, upper the small file cabinet is going to sit up here and I'm hoping the top is exactly even with that which is all a good thing you guys could see I put metal this is double quite a bit of area all around here obviously there's going to be metal here the cabinet's going to sit there this is already metal and the heater is going to be sitting in a um, cooking tray so to speak one of those aluminum trays so with all of that um, the heater also burns diesel fuel which if you're familiar with diesel if you spill it and drop a match into it the match will burn but the diesel will not ignite right so I'm hoping that and obviously I'm only going to run it when I'm in here so hopefully with all of that this could be considered relatively safe I also have that big uh, fire extinguisher right there so anyway um, about mice <sighs> they're a pest around the heater is they they cannot get into right supposedly if something is uh, a mouse could get into any opening uh, the size of a dime or uh, bigger so there are none of those openings, you know, everywhere else. They're going to be able to get back here. I just have to be able to control them with traps. Uh, poison, not so good, because then they'll go back here and uh, cause a smell. 
Not that I want to call this complete, but it's starting to rain outside, so for today it's going to have to be complete. Obviously, I got six file drawers worth of storage. This is letter size, not legal size. And one could see you start putting the stuff you're going to work on or ha need all the time right in front of you. In this case, there's a hoard of carburetors in here, hoses, throttles, stuff like that. And I need to go through the remainder of my stuff and figure out what is going to go where. I deliberately left just enough space on top here for this tray to go. And basically, from a one-handed point of view, it's a little heavy, but I have another one here, obviously. So these are the tools I use every day and constantly. Just call it that. Um, I always, always, always use, you know, open and box metric, sockets, three-eighths, quarter-inch, the, um, the metric Allen keys, right? Phillips some flat blade screwdriver, small flat blade, right? Water pump pliers, obviously ratchets, right? The flex ratchets, the straight ratchets, right? Vice grips, the needle nose version, an adjustable wrench, needle nose, um, Knives, a little more heavy duty, light duty snap knife, aviation snips, tape measure, tape. I mean, every day I use these tools. And once again, from a one handed point of view, I think it's a little much, but yeah, I'm not going to be able to pick that up with one hand. But you just slide it right in here up on top, it has a place to be. It's nice and happy. You guys could see the heater down there. I left enough space so that I can uh, fill it easily, right? I can monitor what's going on with it. This is all metal, double, um, obviously metal. And underneath here, I put a couple of layers of metal before the file cabinet. A um, couple of reasons to keep the mice out and just again, once again, if there's a fire, I'll have a little time to uh, deal with it, especially if I only run it when I'm up here. This um, is a pan, watertight, so to speak. So if it dumps any fuel, it'll stay in the pan. I'll be able to see it's leaking, slide it right out and deal with it. I already drilled for the um, for the exhaust pipe here the exhaust is obviously going to be double piped and I'm going to set it up so that this is centered with um, plenty of metal around it so it doesn't torch the building obviously so between I also have to cut this shorter. So between double piping it and having metal all around there so that it doesn't get hot, I'll also um, check to see how it is. Depending on how hot it gets, I might have to drill that bigger and put a bigger insert in it because it doesn't do me much good uh, if the heater doesn't catch fire, but the exhaust sets my extension on fire and the extension takes the rest of the place out. So what do I have left? I need to get um, some of the electrical stuff sorted out. This is where my solar battery is right now. It's disconnected. I have the radio and the compressor sitting up there. I need to kind of get this stuff a little better organized. So that's a little more usable. I'm also not thrilled with those batteries down there. I got to kind of sort through the hoard, figure out what's good and worth saving and what really should get turned in for scrap. Um, but I want to set up the batteries and battery charger right 
right in that area too right got my little path to walk through here to open up the other doors and get that stuff out um certain things are working this for the rechargeable tools you guys have seen that the draws for keeping some stuff um but i just i need to get it better so that each draw has this is assigned content not every draw is an assortment pack right you want to you want to kind of work toward getting yourself organized this rack i brought in just to kind of sort myself out here to kind of straighten out the mess i have right now i've really only put stuff in two draws this one and i threw a few things in here just to kind of get it out of the way um these cabinets the file cabinets really are a natural for power tools quite honestly if you could set yourself up that you know you put your circular saw in there and quite a few other things right close it up it's nice and safe i set this up so that um there's metal underneath the file cabinets so mice can't get in the open area and nest in the file cabinets there's nothing worse than opening up a file cabinet and having the stink of mouse in there the other thing you could do is um, mothballs, you know, the stuff that smells like your great-grandmother, perhaps. You know, folks wore a lot of wool back then, and the moths would get in and eat all the wool. So everybody had mothballs all over this, all over everything. If you throw a few of those, um, open the drawer up and throw a few of those in the base of each one of those. Then you close it up. Um, the smell... <laughs> <laughs> kind of stays in here and the mice don't care for that smell I mean they they'd rather be somewhere else so between making it so they can't get in there and then having it smell bad hopefully it'll keep the mice the heck out of there for you um once again it's just right open it up take what you need close it up for now, I just stacked the levels here and that there. Obviously, that's the solar charger. I'm not sure what's going to end up in that little tunnel area in there. i got to finish straightening that out. Um, this metal rack, you guys saw me cutting the metal for it. I used my uh, Harbor Freight welder, which is, you know, the wire feed guy. It uses an AC arc. It doesn't really do a great job especially if the metal's cold it really doesn't sink into this this angle iron bed frame all that well so it's kind of like putting bubble gum on it um but adequate for this just the welds aren't pretty that's why i'm not showing them to you i've drilled holes and i'm gonna use the word bolt <laughs> phillips head fastenered <laughs> The, um, the metal to here if I call them anything other than fill head fasteners I end up with YouTube flagging my channel um, so there we go I think that's all I can show you and tell you for now um, later on you I might be doing a video and then just mention oh by the way I did the following and you guys will see it but yeah that once again lives right up here when I have stuff to do I just take it down and get to work so between having this area here functioning and I got the um, base under the shed right and the shed's far enough out of the way that they can put the um, carport up if they ever get here. Really kind of disappointed in those people. Hopefully they do a good job and I don't have to be slamming on them. But I guess uh, given the uh, virus going around, I guess everybody needs to put up a carport. I guess to keep your toys in. So... 
once again, hopefully it's not like Lucy and the football and I keep calling and they keep telling me, don't worry, it'll be there soon. We're getting together a bunch of customers near you and then we'll send the team to install yours and everyone else's, right? Hopefully, you know, they're not just threading me along until the ground freezes and then they say, oh, we can't do it this year. We'll just keep your deposit till next year and get to you when we can. Um, I guess until there's snow on the ground, we're pretty good. And speaking of snow, that four-letter word, they're beginning to threaten it. Um, you know, you look at the weather reports, and it might not be falling on me, but it's not falling all that many miles from me. Even today... Uh, it was nice this morning, middle 50s. Right now, it's probably about 45. The temperature's been dropping. And uh, it had the looks of, of snow, especially out that way. So, I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, um, I want to take a moment to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. If you're watching this video... Your life might be not be perfect. None of them are. But hopefully it's going pretty well. And good things are happening for you. Everything's moving forward. You're not sick. And uh, you're not in pain. And your relatives are doing well. And everyone else you care about are doing well. Including the four-legged critters. And life is going pretty good. So, anyway, everybody has my best regards, and once again, I hope your lives are going well. I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. And by thanks, I'd like to give thanksgiving for all the people who watch my videos, right? There would be no hoarding mayhem without the support I get from my friends and subscribers and Many of my subscribers over the years have turned into friends, and I hope it stays that way. All right, folks, once again, take care. Remember, feet down, heads up, and get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.